Boy, have I got an awful topic for us today. Are you going to be single for the rest of your life or not? Where do I come from with this question? Check out this video. The bottom 80% of men are competing for the bottom 20% of women on Tinder and the top 80% of women are competing for the top 20% of men. So this means that most men to most women are effectively invisible and most women to a small number of men are effectively usable. If that was too fast for the non-native English speakers, let me translate that. Most guys that are not so appealing to women are basically competing for or they are accepted and seen and interest or looked up by the bottom 20% of women. That's according to Tinder statistics. Because those women are probably not so attractive, so they are not appealing for the really appealing guys. And for women, the majority of them are competing and they are attracted to and they are interested in the top 20% of guys that are better looking in their eyes or better socially situated, uh, with better income, you know, with better prospects for life overall. Tinder is widespread. I don't know if this is the entire population of the planet though, but still let's look at these numbers as significant, at least for the Europe, North America, maybe South American continent, maybe the African continent, maybe the Asian continent, uh, I don't know there. There's a lot of factors here at play, but the biggest contributing factor to this situation is women's uh, emancipation, okay? Women's access to uh, education, thanks to uh, feminism, thanks to the birth control pill, okay? Women can actually take the time to study, to get educated, and then to develop a career. And a lot of women do this Partly because we were raised like that. I think a lot of women were raised like that by our mothers. Secondly, there are some women whose dream actually is to become a doctor, an astronaut, a lawyer. So they want to be out there. They want to be in the action. Okay? A lot of women are wired like that also. So those, whatever the explanation is for why a woman is out there getting educated, investing a lot of time and energy in her career, and then because of her hypergamous nature, so she wants the best of the best possible, she's going to look at even, uh, so her standards are not going to go down, but they're going to go up. From that perspective, we have this situation now where women are educated, they're, they're having a higher income than a lot of men, their prospects in the social world are much better on their own. And they've got their own home, they can take care of themselves, they don't need somebody to take care of themselves. Why settle for what they don't want when they're good on their own? That, that's the pragmatic reality of most people nowadays. So from that perspective, what does this do? You know, guys that are the top 20%, apparently according to Tinder numbers, opportunism, they're gonna have fun, use, just like this guy said there. They're using women. And the rest of the guys are just single and not with no prospect of being in a relationship. What are we gonna do in this situation? Number one, you're not gonna like what I have to say, but if you at least do 50% of the time what I share here, I think you're a winner in life in general. Can I promise you that you're going to find the man of your dreams or woman of your dreams? I'm not going to lie. I can't promise that. Nobody can promise that for us. Unless awful, nasty marketing skills uh, or techniques, I don't want that. You're like That's not my case here. And number two, well, uh, there's. I'm looking at the individual, what you can do on your own. But let me tell you the good side of this. If you do your job well enough, you're going to inspire people of the opposite sex that see you, whether they're in your social circle, whether they're at work, whether they're, I don't know, they're following you online, wherever you are, you might inspire the people of opposite sex to start doing something differently. So, what are my actual perspectives? Number one, give it up. Yep, hate me, curse me, swear to me, whatever. <laughs> Just bring in the nasty words, but give it up. 
Give up the anxiety, the stress, the worry, the rumination, the obsession. Just give it the fuck up. It's not going to make you more attractive. And in the long term, let me ask you this. If you knew that anxiety, ruminating, obsession, um, using your energy in useless ways were to diminish your mating value, would you still do it? Okay, you got your answer. Number two, take care of your health. What I mean by this is, first of all, you need to understand the importance of step one. The um, Institute for Integral Nutrition in the United States actually has this concept, which is very simple. Primary nutrition, well-being, happiness, quality of personal relationships, your subjective experience of life. Secondary nutrition, food. So when you're looking at health, you got to freaking understand the importance of step number one that I said here. And then you're looking at health, what, in quality of sleep, quality of nutrition, working out regime, whatever it is for you, because I'm not going to start here to tell everybody that they need to be a fitness model um, or any other kind of model. I'm not going to start propelling here the classic strategy. Women consider that fit men, really well-built men, are healthy. Let me tell you, some of those men are taking steroids, testosterone shots, whatever other kinds of, you know, supplements to uh, bulk themselves up. That's not healthy. No. Check it out. It's not healthy. Secondly, what do women do? Well, they've learned that men consider healthy women the more young looking, more, uh, there are some cues of fertility, like full lips, um, what is it, clear skin, and um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, you know, well-stretched skin, what, what, what is the word? I'm, I'm lacking the English word for this. They get a lot of facelifts, basically, for this reason, and they're, you know, the almond-shaped eyes and all of that. Um, big breasts, big butt, you know, hourglass figure, and they get that, Again, nature doesn't do that. Nature gives whatever it considered important for survival, for fitness, for adaptability to the environment, but over like, yeah, nature doesn't do that. So uh, those women will, women, that's their strategy to make themselves look healthier. They plump their lips, they plump their faces or facelift. They inject, you know, the, the collar, not the, the, the jawline is accentuated, the brow line is accentuated, um, implants, implants in the bottom, buttocks, a lot of stuff. We have science in our corner nowadays, but we don't freaking use it. We listen to a lot of podcasts. How many of those people, when they go dating, do they actually talk about health? Like, what are your blood tests like? What are your hormone tests like? Uh, what are your fertility tests like? I mean, I know you look good. Great for you if you've done your job, whatever you did. But what is your actual health? And let me tell you, in hookup, does anybody consider getting tested for STDs? No. Fuck no. Although, in pornography, all the stars are getting tested regularly. We don't fucking do that. Like there's, we didn't make the switch. Like it's just a show and impress and that's it. We're not looking at the substance of it. So I'm here to tell you, look at the freaking substance and take your energy after you've removed it from ruminating, being anxious and all that, take it into health. You can tell that I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> and step number three will be from my side, invest in and that means time, energy, attention, priority, money, in embodying your pleasure. If you want to skip all those two steps, the first ones, and then just go for step number three, but you're like freaking out and all that, it's not going to work. If you want to skip step number one because you feel that, oh, come on, this is the biggest truism, we all know it, and you want to go for step number two, health, good luck with that. I'll be the first one to own this, and I think you all know that. When we have an, an 
psychological negative period in our lives, or the quality of our sleep is going down. No matter how much we eat because we're so stressed out, maybe we don't assimilate as much, maybe our hair falls down, we shed a lot of hair, uh, maybe we gain a lot of weight because when you're stressed out, your entire system is on, it's rewiring itself and you're, you're bulking up basically in fat, not in muscles. And there are probably a lot of other uh, health concerns where your internal organs are being affected. And please, if you've heard this a gazillion time, you're going to hear it the gazillion in once time <laughs> or second time uh, unhealthy organs an unhealthy body is not going to be attractive you're not going to feel attractive you're not going to feel like having fun you're not going to feel like being in a relationship you're not going to have the energy to invest in a relationship because your body will be consuming a lot of energy to maintain your well deprecating health so I think Step number one and step number two are extremely important. When you check those and then you go to step number three, it'll be easier for you to embody pleasure. So how can I help you? With step number one, give it up, my practices. And the reason I've done my somatic practices, I've reduced, like they're competitive with what? Netflix. Okay, that's how much you pay for a Netflix subscription. Six dollars plus tax or something like that. At least that's what it's in our country. But I took it like in that place because I want to see people that they stop coming up with the excuse. It's too expensive to see a therapist or whatever. No, you get the resources, which are practices. They're going to help you relax, be more at peace. You know, not so much ruminating, not so much scenarios playing in your head. So that's what I've got most accessible for everybody. And it's not because I'm cheap or the work is poor, no. It's because I want it to be sustainable for the long run. If you're well right now, you're gonna be great. If you're not so well, this is gonna help you relax. It's gotta be sustainable. That's That was my intention with it. So somatic practices, check out the link. It's the first one that I put up here. With the second one, the health, I can't do that much because that one requires that you seek a, a medical professional you get tested, you know, blood tests, hormonal tests, fertility tests, and get a strategy based on your test results. So um, that one, I can only remind you that it's important to invest some time and resources. And if you take my monthly subscription, it's not going to kill your budget. It's really not. You're going to have resources to go and do those tests. And step number three... Well, for those, you can take a one-time coaching session and we can look at what you can do to bring more pleasure in your life, but only after you've looked at step number one and step number two, because if you're freaking out and stressing out and consuming energy with other problems, it's not going to happen. I can come up with the most brilliant ideas. It's not going to happen if you're not in the right place. That's just how it is. Also, what I have are online programs with practices either for women, and those are their 12 weeks worth of practices, you're going to enjoy those. And I have the massages, okay? Those classes are going to be inspirational to you to learn new stuff that you can do with your partner or stuff that you can do on your own, all right? So those are resources no matter what your relationship status is. And that was my approach. That's why I started doing this work. I was not finding a reciprocating partner. I didn't want to compromise, so I said, okay, i got to do something with my instinct, with my impulse. I have it. I feel it. I'm human. It's got to be expressed. So that's where my work comes from. Not because I've been, you know, extremely fortunate to have just the best of the best in terms of relationship experience. I was like the, mo the majority of people where we've had a lot of problems, um, so I told myself, okay, there's got to be a different way to go about this. So that was my way. Finding resources and bringing them accessible to everyone. Drop me a comment to let me know if you're actually doing this stuff. Okay, I hope something clicks in you and you start to do. 
if nothing more than just for your mating value. Okay, an unhappy partner, a partner that doesn't take care of themselves at all, is not going to be attractive. Okay, your mating value is going to be through the basement. <laughs> and after you start doing stuff for yourself, okay, check out other videos. But after you start getting to work, all right, practices below, programs below, start working on yourself. Bye.